verse delivered in reverse why does it feel so good the secret under lock and key give it to me oh, oh, you are my guilty pleasure Hey everyone and welcome. Welcome to another episode of Into the Music. This is our first ever panel discussion. And so our topic today is going to be guilty pleasures. And what is that? Uh, I, it's probably relative to each one of us on this panel right now, but I think overall, I mean, the way I'll go first, right? And say, um, it's that one that, you know, oh my God, what's someone going to think who knows me? Oh no, you know, I stand guilty, you know? Girls, hold on to your boyfriends. Greg actually put that on his list of ones that he loves and goes to all the time. So, <laughs> or something like that. So, uh, <laughs> so hold on tight because I'm going to show you my list, but I'm going to actually go last. Uh, and we got Phil. So Phil is actually right below me. Hey, Phil, wave and say hey. Hello, uh, everyone. So Phil's <laughs> going to go first. So guys, and do you want to weigh in and jump in and say anything else about what you guys perceive as guilty pleasures before we get into this? Well, like I said, I think some of this is nostalgia, but also some of this is just shame. <laughs> I think another let's, thing let's that's see. part of it is like it flies in the face of one might th think that we would listen to. Like if you were to mm. just first glance, look at me or at first glance, look at Greg or, or, you know, Phil, John, and think there's no way they would like this band or like this song. Um, and we kind of throw you for a loop. But um, yeah, I think that it's definitely a, a guilty pleasure is definitely not like if someone were to ask you your your favorite songs or favorite artists. I might keep th those guilty pleasures a little close to the vest upon first meeting or first answering of that question. And then as I get to know someone and I'm feeling vulnerable, <laughs> like I can share this with them, then I'm like, oh yeah, by the way, I like this song. Um, and that I think kind of fits into it too. Like aren't there t-shirts or pajama bottoms, or maybe there's no pajama bottoms, <laughs> but anything along Not the here. <laughs> that that you're comfortable and you love, right? Behind your closed doors. But maybe you don't want to show that t-shirt those pajama bottoms or the fact that you don't wear pajama bottoms walking around um you don't show that outside be beyond those doors right so um i think this is fun you know this is really cool john actually had this idea john john you're brilliant <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be doing this all <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna forget and be like why is he looking that way <laughs> to no one all right so um phil are you ready yes so get us going all right cool okay all right so my number five pick is Kung's versus Cooking on Three Burners, and the song is This Girl. I grew up on AM radio and there were a lot of one hit wonders and I love that type of junk. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that seems to have gone away, but there's one place where this type of stuff happens all the time. It was my gym and they would play this song and it would come on. And all the older guys that like my age are like, I hate this music at this gym. I wish they could do something about it. But when this song came on, I was like, dude, <laughs> I loved it. I just <laughs> loved it. So that's what I, so that's why I put this one on. Had a and really good coming. beat. Yeah, really good beat. Nice groove. Don't know if it's something I would be going to a lot, but um, I didn't like the vocals, the way the vocals were produced. And I actually initially thought that and wrote that. And then I said to myself, wait a minute. Um, is this one of those where maybe the vocals were sampled from another song and dropped into this? Because then I could, because it seemed like the vocals were sort of separate from the rest of the production of the song. Um, that's nitpicking. But overall, you know, definitely, I could definitely see this being a song that you like because I know that you're really into, and me too. I mean, I'm into really good sort of grooves and dance beats and stuff like that. Uh, I like to dance. That's <laughs> a guilty pl pleasure. He does? 
He's bald and old. How can he dance? Well, but I, uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised by the song, given the theme of today's, you know, uh, conference, if you will, about the, I, I don't know if I would feel as guilty compared to some of the other tracks that we're going to get into today. Um, and I really enjoyed the guitar work in the song. That was like one of the first things that that I noted was um, was how interesting uh, the electric guitar was. So that's that's my opinion on on the track so don't feel feel no shame phil i really like the concept of this list because it means i can be rude about some of the songs um so let's kick off um thankfully i think this passed me by when it came out and um that's <laughs> i'm very thankful um don't know anything about it but it seems to me like a bit of a, a pastiche um almost music by musical version of Painted by Numbers. Someone's dropped something in there. Someone's dropped something in there. Um, the vocals I found were really annoying, how they came, what I would call, in and out of focus. And you can imagine some guy behind a desk saying, I'll oh, put in a fat beat there. And the guy says, F or PH? Yeah, PH. Bang. And then it goes. So <laughs> it had all the elements, and it was like someone was scrapbooking a song together to play it on the, on the, you know, on the beach. This, this band is a one-hit wonder. And for me, this thing just yeah. sticks in my head. And I'm like, when I hear that, dan, 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 dan you know, it's... It's a studio-based song, isn't it? It's put together mm -hmm. by producers rather than a band. Mm-hmm. He you knows worse out there, and we'll soon come to them. I think. <laughs> All right, so we go to the next one. All right. Yep. Dion Warwick, do you know the way to San Jose? Do you know the way to San Jose? I've been away so long, I may go wrong and lose my way. Do you know the way to San Jose? I'm going back to find some peace of mind in San Jose. It's nostalgic for me. This is something my parents would listen to and think they were with the hipsters, you know, and it was corny and and lame at the time when I was a kid. I would not even look at this, but you can't fault Dion Warwick's voice. She's got a beautiful voice. And this is a Burt Backrack song. And Burt Backrack has become one of these people like back in the day, people would be like, you know, stinks and the, oh this guy's so corny and the syrupy and blah blah but now he's come back and he's one of these people that rec people recognize as having a real song craft about him and you know mm -hmm. Elvis Costello's worked with him and Elvis Costello recognizes the you know the, the art of putting together a tune like this which beautiful melody and you know I, I that's how I feel about this song and that's yeah, why I like know, it I but think back, it's a great you know, song and Burt Bacharach is amazing um walk on by i say a little prayer i mean he's got some catalog just a wonderful song yeah yeah good choice yeah My, I'd uh, echo. So oh, go ahead john go ahead john i'd echo that i've you can't really knock dion warwick um it's one of her weaker efforts i think the first time i heard this song was actually on the frankie goes to hollywood debut album they did a version of it and it was oh. pretty lame on that as well <laughs> um <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's still, she's got a great voice. It is a nice song. Um, I'd heartily recommend from her, she does a German language version of Walk On By, which is called uh, Gave Or By. And for Schoolboy Laughs, listen to her sing it in German. It is brilliant. So yeah, I, li I like this song. I agree that she has, she has a really lovely voice, kind of airy. Um, so of the few iterations of the song I've heard, this is probably the best one. But every time I hear it, I can't help but think that it was just the, 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 the production and funding was brought to you by the people at visitsanjose.com. Like, it's just such a, such a, like, you would be definitely hear it on a commercial for like Visit California or something like that, um, that their Department of Tourism would use. Uh, but it, it, was, it was a nice song. I just think it's not necessarily, sort of as John would say, my bag. For me, this is more about the Burt Backrack sound than this actual song. It's just a way to say, okay, I yeah, am yeah, a goober yeah. and I really do like these kind of syrupy songs by Burt Backrack more than more than Dion Warwick. I mean, I love Dion Warwick. She's got a nice voice, but anyway. Okay, next song is Marshall Tucker Band, Heard It in a Love Song.
first of all, I love Marshall Tucker. And the first three albums are really good Southern rock, you know. And Greg, you can attest to this. On Long Island, Southern rock took over the island. I mean, you saw people walking around in cowboy boots and hats and talking CB language, which is ridiculous. When that you was hear me, people. right in the mirror. <laughs> And when this song came out, my brother was a big Southern rock fan. And even he, when I told him I bought this, I just picked this up for under $6. And I was like, I got to get it. And I put this on and I was like, heard it a lot, can't be wrong. And I just love it. It's like, and I know it's stupid. It's like a silly Southern rock song. I really so, liked the clean guitar sound in it. Um, that was kind of, it's kind of refreshing when you're, when most of the music I listen to has like, all these effects being implemented on the guitar through pedals or production or what have you. And then this is just really clean and twangy and kind of unadulterated. So that was kind of nice and refreshing. And I got to say the, the flute work was, uh, was really good too. Um, just the, the, <laughs> the, the voice was just a little bit too country and not enough rock and roll for me in the vocals. Um, but not a bad song. Yeah, I thought this was a stinker, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> but I agree. I really like the flute work. Um, <laughs> but the rest of it, it sounded like a 70s TV um, theme tune. I almost got a little bit of the little hobo in there or something like that. Um, it was real sort of cod country. Um, so there wasn't any sort of um, genuineness to it at all. You know? um, so it wasn't, wasn't enjoyable to me. Sorry, Phil. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Get out of here. <laughs> Marshall Tucker Band is like one of the top Southern rock bands of all time. And they don't get mentioned enough, right? Because it's always the Allman Brothers and Lynn Skinner. And, but Marshall Tucker Band, oh, they had some great songs. Now, granted, this is not along that line of like rock songs that I'm, you know, that I think Phil probably has in mind, right? But, I mean, it's Toy Caldwell, you know, the lead guitarist and songwriter of that band. Um, and he was, he's actually, when you think about really great guitarists in the 70s, that guy right there has to be in discussion. Uh, and Doug Gray, great singer. I mean, so unique. Um, and he's got a real good sort of bluesy country set of sort of style that if you listen to some of the other stuff older with the rock sound, so, so good. So yeah, this is poppy and it's lovey and sappy and stuff, but it's also nice and it's got some really good guitars and it's Marshall Tucker and I can't hate on it at all. So uh, uh, this is a big thumbs up for me. Okay, so the number two is Madonna into the groove. like madonna and this song in particular this brings back so many memories this you know desperately seeking susan the movie this is like when i graduated college and we all were wearing like salvation army clothes we go to salvation army and buy our clothes there and we'd all live like this like we look like we were scruff and we were hanging down in the lower village and they even have the video for this and she's dancing in the dance interior and i used to hit those clubs and everything and it just brings back so many memories and I love Madonna and I loved her all the way up to Ray of Light. And I, I think Ray of Light and Bedtime Stories are great albums and on their own. But then after that, she lost the plot. I mean, she tried to get all ghetto and, you know, oh, come on in her posh, lame British voice. No offense, John, but her voice, her British accent is horrible. And she's just too full of herself now. And I think she's not aging gracefully but up until that point up until ray light i thought she was amazing That's i hope she friend. doesn't watch this episode i'm gonna be really embarrassed come on <laughs> i'm not i tell her She's, she lived in I new york a long time wait, she could take it i gotta shoot her an email right now let her know that <laughs> Hey, that's going to be an awkward phone call later <laughs> <laughs> all right andy sorry madonna <laughs> um i grew up uh, like this, I was two years old when this track came out. So, uh, 
but I remember my, my older brother loving Madonna um, and me listening to God, I'll never forget the cassette tape with her like midriff on it that had all of her like earliest, biggest hits. Um, I think like, like a Immaculate mar- conception. Yeah. Um, and I, <laughs> I really liked that. I really liked that album, but this was, it was, it was all right. It wasn't horrible, but that drum, the drum machine in the song, halfway by halfway through the song, I was like writing down this drum machine is killing me. Am I? Because <laughs> it was just so constant and repetitive. And I love drum fills and variants, and and it, there was none of that. So it was just uh Summer of '85. We're at, we're on a school holiday in Greece, supposedly visiting all the amphitheaters and stuff. And every night. Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds and Into the Groove by Madonna played about six times every night. And, you know, it was great. It's proper 80s trashy pop. Um, having listened to it, I kind of reevaluated my opinion. Although she has always had pretty weak vocals, I think it's her vocals actually carry this song because the more I listened to it with headphones on rather than in a club, the synths and the drum machine was so annoying. I mean, I... You know, so I found myself trying to zone that out and just listen to her voice. Um, I prefer uh, Sonic Youth's version, Chicana Youth's version, Into the Groovy. That's a great listen uh, for if you want hmm. something different. But yeah, I mean, Madonna-wise, I'd probably like two or three of her songs, um, Just Like a Prayer and Frozen, really like. Um, the rest of it's pretty much pap as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, she's good at what she does. And made a lot of money out of it, so all more power to her. <laughs> all right, next one. Okay, the next one is. Oh, it's a tentative thumbs up, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Middle of the road. Stars up in the heavens I've been in love with you I am in love with you And the reason why I picked this one Is not so much particularly for this song It's the whole genre it's that soft rock, the singer-songwriters in the 70s, like the, the band Bread. It was a toss-up between this song and a Bread song. Uh, Seals and Crofts, Christopher Cross, all these like simp- like sappy, syrupy songs. And like when, when we're driving in the car and I'm acting up, my wife would put this on to mellow me out. So like to put on like the, you know, <laughs> soft rock shit. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, and then I'll start singing them. And it's so therapy. And I'm like, but I love them. It's a nostalgia thing. So it's like, how. wait, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead really quick, but it's like the little kid, you know, who like acting up in the van in the car. When is mom, he not acting up? <laughs> yeah, and, true. and mom puts in the wiggles or something like that. Okay. <laughs> and then the, or wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love the idea of Pavlovian conditioning for a group. <laughs> it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. <laughs> what would you think of the song? <laughs> oh, well, ah, <laughs> uh, the song. Well, my first note after I heard it was, uh, things have been around a really long time, but not near as long as this guy has loved the subject matter of this song. Uh, he's very. He's, he's, I've loved you longer than this and more than that. Oh, when you said sappy, you were not, you were not kidding. Um, yeah, it's sweet, but cheesy. That's my, that's my synopsis. John. Yeah, I think that the title of this song is actually the parenthesis. Thank God it's not longer. 
Um, <laughs> saccharin is a word that's been used. Unfortunately, I'm t- too diabetic and I could feel myself slipping into a coma. Listen to this. Um, it is longer than I could cope with. Uh, um, boy, he picked a theme and ran with it, didn't he? He kept on running like Forrest Gump. Um, yeah, I've, it was so bad. I found myself wanting to listen to Annie's song. That's how bad it was. Um, oh. So, yeah, not a big fan. <laughs> wow. Phil, I'm going to come to your rescue. I like this song a lot. <laughs> I really do. I really do. I really do. I mean, I mean, he's a longer than... Da, 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 higher plus, than uh, plus it, it has a french horn in it how can you go oh, wrong with it that? has a horn <laughs> it has a horn that sounds I take like back what i said i love it french horn <laughs> that's the horn that sounds like in penny in penny lane it sounds exactly. like penny lane. <laughs> so right there and just that longer than ah uh, I love it. You know, he could be singing longer than I'm picking my nose or eating. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's just, he just had me. He had me like Jerry Maguire. He had me at longer than. And so there you go. It's always, it goes, ah, I got sappy a little bit. You know, wait till you get to my list. Um, there's one on there. So <laughs> thumbs up. Those are, those are my songs. And, you know, I mean, this is more about genre than anything else. Like I said, I listen to these sappy songs and i don't know for some reason they just stick and i think it has to do with childhood and sitting in the back of the seat of the car and the am radio on and these songs come on and even though you didn't think you were listening you were and then they just bring back memories (laughs) (laughs) all right this this was great let us know let us know which songs were the worst which songs were the best um yeah. And what are your guilty pleasures? I want to hear all those folks out there that I that we see, we hear, you know, in our comments. Uh, you know, you know who you are, Eric with an H and uh, Glenn and right down the line. I want to know your guilty pleasures, too. Uh, Wonder Boy and Bob. Wonder Boy, Bob. I mean, Arthur. right down the line. <laughs> Arthur. Yeah. Um, and so but in the meantime, I really hope you did enjoy this and we'll see every one of you on the next uh, reaction episode or next panel episode on Into the Music.